I get a lot of questions from YouTube, friends, and family asking if an iPad will work for them as their main computer. I usually respond by asking what they use a computer for. So let's break down what most people probably need from a computer and if iPad can be their only computer. Hey, I'm Jerry, and I've used my iPad for just about everything over the last two years. This device just really fits my needs and I really enjoy using it because it's a versatile touchscreen tablet that can also be transformed into a workstation with a mouse and keyboard. People complained from the introduction of the iPad that it was a content consumption device and not made for content creation. I'd agree with that. However, over the last five years or so, there's been a dramatic shift in the ability to actually use the iPad for more than just watching videos and playing games. Starting off, the most important thing that makes the iPad a more useful device is a keyboard. Any keyboard case or Bluetooth keyboard will exponentially increase the ability to type long messages or documents on the iPad. However, I prefer the iPad Magic Keyboard. As a whole, the iPad Magic Keyboard offers a dock-like experience for desktop use with a great feeling backlit keyboard, a smooth operating trackpad, and adjustable viewing angles. For apps that have been fully updated for the iPad's keyboard and mouse support, there is a new level of precision and productivity that can be achieved. Just because I'm using an iPad Pro with a Magic Keyboard does not mean that this video only pertains to the iPad Pro. The same information applies to all iPads. There are a ton of keyboard options out there for iPads for any size, and just about any Bluetooth keyboard or mouse will work just fine. So, what do you use a computer for? I would think that most people would say web browsing is the main thing they use a computer for. That's what I would say. An iPad obviously has a fantastic Safari web browser built in. iPad OS 13 brought the iPad much closer to a desktop class browsing experience by showing desktop sites by default iPad will now take advantage of the larger display compared to a phone and show more content or more columns, which means it's faster to find what you want. Just like on the Mac, when you find something you want to read, but the page is a bit messy and the layout can be a little bit better, you can enable Reader View and Safari will just pull the content of the article forward, improve the formatting so that you can actually read what you want without getting distracted by bouncing ads or formatting around photos. Most of the time when I use Safari, I will have a bunch of tabs open, especially if I'm trying to comparison shop or research something. You can have as many tabs as you want open on iPad and move them around however you want. You also have the ability, finally, to add fav icons to tabs on iPad. You may not know this, but fav icons are a big deal when you have a bunch of tabs open and you're just trying to find the one specific article or page that you have open. However, everything looks the exact same. With the fav icons, you finally get that little picture of what website is on there and it's easier to find. Speaking of comparison shopping, now you can even have two windows of Safari side by side. So you can see two different pages or two items at the same time if you're trying to decide which overhead camera rig setup to buy. You know, hypothetically. You might have noticed that I was using Amazon on the web instead of the Amazon app. And that's because with all of the changes in Safari since iPadOS 13, I've found that in most cases, the website works better and is more consistent in Safari. And that goes for almost all shopping pages I use like Home Depot or Apple, as well as many other sites, including YouTube and Twitter. Besides the websites actually running better and in some cases offering more features than the apps, I find that I'm not filling up my iPad storage space with apps that I don't need and having all those extra notifications. But you should definitely hit subscribe below and hit the bell for notifications for my videos. The last two things I'll say about Safari on iPad is that we now have a download manager to monitor the progress of downloads and view download history. And we also have the ability to upload any file from the iPad Files app, no longer just limited to photos. You can download files of any type, whether or not you can actually open them on iPad. And you can now upload anything like a resume file or documents from your bank. Email and social networking are probably a close second to browsing the web when it comes to computer use. I don't have a whole lot to say because you all know you can use social media apps and now the websites in Safari. And the built-in email client works really well. If you're looking for more information on how to use email, this is probably not the video for you. But suffice to say, with the iPad and a keyboard, I can crank out email responses and weed out all the crap just as fast as I can on a Mac or a Windows PC. The only problem is actually wanting to go through email. After web and email, I would say document creation is probably next on the list of computer tasks. You have a bunch of options for word processing, notes, and spreadsheets. You can go with Apple's built-in iWork apps like Pages and Numbers and use the built-in Apple Notes. All of these apps sync with iCloud for backup and viewing on another device, 
and are fully updated for current iPad features like mouse support. Google Docs and Microsoft Office apps have issues with mouse support on iPad currently, but Microsoft has already started beta testing mouse support and that should be available shortly. Google Docs though in Safari has full functionality with mouse on iPad and of course, both of these have their own syncing ability with Google Drive or OneDrive. One complaint that I've heard from others and myself is that file management on the iPad is not great. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's not great, but it's usable. Most apps will save files directly to their respective cloud location, but you can choose to save files locally on the iPad if you want. Inside the Files app, you can navigate to a folder, create a folder, call it whatever you want, and save files to it from whichever app. And if you want to see your respective cloud service integrated with the iPad Files app, you can add it by tapping on the Menu button, Edit Sidebar, then you will see what options are available. For other types of documents that you might come across like PDFs, there's always Acrobat Reader and Adobe Fill In Sign, which I use for work frequently. If I'm sent a timesheet or signature required document, I can send it from my email to Fill In Sign, add my signature and send it back. Fill In Sign on the iPad works far faster for me compared to a PDF software on PC. And I know that sometimes there's just no getting around needing to print or scan documents. And yes, iPad can do both. Using any AirPrint compatible printer or a shared printer on a network, you can absolutely print. And if I need to scan a document, the awesome Microsoft Office Lens is the way to do it. Office Lens makes it easy to line up a photo, take it, and Lens will automatically clean up and straighten the image to create a presentable document. Next up, photo management. I prefer Google Photos because it really does hit all the requirements I have for a photo management app like syncing, editing, and sharing. When I take photos from my iPhone, they are automatically uploaded, as you would expect, and are available across all devices pretty quickly. I have over 56,000 photos on Google Photos, and I use it for shared albums with friends and family for things like holidays or parties. This gives us a shared album for an event that we can all save photos to and see what everyone else took photos of. Of course, you can also get photos from a non-smartphone camera onto the iPad and into Google Photos by a few different ways. If you have an iPad Pro with USB-C, you can connect the camera directly to the iPad with a USB-C cable and copy the files over. If you have an iPad with Lightning, you can use the Apple USB 3 camera adapter. You can even use an SD card reader like this Kokaka SD card reader that uses USB-C. Even if you don't want to physically connect something to the iPad, most cameras have apps for the iPad to control a camera and wirelessly transfer photos and videos from the camera to the iPad. Unfortunately, there is one caveat to this. No matter which method you choose, you will have to import photos into Apple Photos first, then Google Photos will back up your camera roll. What I like to do is make sure iCloud Photos is disabled, and after everything is backed up to Google Photos, Google, 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 Google Photos, you can use the free up space utility, which will delete photos and videos out of the Apple camera roll if it's been successfully backed up to Google. Although computers can do so much more, entertainment is another big use for a computer. From watching videos on apps like YouTube or Netflix to playing casual games like what you can get with a little $5 subscription to Apple Arcade, this is what iPad was built for. You can even play not so casual games like Modern Combat 5. You can get live TV from apps like AT&T, TV Now, or YouTube TV. Entertainment opportunities are really endless on iPad. The retina screens and decent speakers on the iPad make it a fantastic device for watching video anywhere, from on the couch to a kitchen counter when cooking, or because the iPad is so portable when traveling on an airplane. Someday. With just a simple folding case of some kind, you can prop up an iPad almost anywhere, pop in some headphones, and drown out the rest of the noise. So. I know that this is not an exhaustive list of what you might use a computer for, but I do think that this covers most activities that most people use a computer for. There are of course tens of thousands of apps that give the iPad the ability to help you learn, work, and create almost anything. From video editing and graphic arts to learning languages and flying a plane, the iPad is probably the most versatile computer you can buy. I personally like using iPad, and I like finding ways to make it work better for me. In my experience, iPad can be your only computer. Just like switching from a PC to a Mac or vice versa, making the switch to iPad can be daunting and confusing as you learn all the new ways to do things. You will find things that you like and things that you don't like or things that confuse and frustrate you, but eventually you just use it. But what do you think? Are there workflows that you absolutely cannot move to iPad? 
If you've made the jump, what's the best thing about using the iPad for everything? For me, the massive changes in Safari and mouse support have allowed me to make the iPad my only computer when I want. I switch all the time just because I'm crazy, but if you wanna see more about how Safari can make your iPad more like a laptop, check out this video over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.